Look at ColorFX Pro 3.0 and the interface window. On the left hand panel there are 52 filters to choose from and on the right hand side of the screen there will be over 250 different filter effects. There are some tabs along the left hand side of the screen and these are suggested filters for traditional stylized type filters or even for landscape or portraits. By clicking on the All button this will reveal all of the 52 different filters. On the left hand side you'll notice that there are some stars and if you click on this star, let's suppose bleach bypasses one of your fil favorite filters, this becomes a red star. And now we can select the filters tab along the bottom here and this will start revealing some of our favorite filters. We'll choose all to reveal all 52 filters. At the top of the screen we can show just the image, the left panel hides, and by clicking on the right button this will show the image as well as the filter list down below. I can choose different views for instance. So let's go ahead first of all and we're going to select some of these different filter effects, get an idea of what some of these can do. We're going to choose contrast color range and this filter allows me to go through and select through this different color spectrum slider to choose some different color ranges as well as selecting color contrast, brightness, as well as contrast. Cross-processing has a variety of different methods to choose. By selecting the drop-down menu I can go through and this will give me a nice live update as I hover over these different methods. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one that I like. Let's go ahead and choose this one here. This is C04. I can increase the strength of this particular filter by clicking and moving that to the right or decrease it by clicking and moving the slider to the left. So we're going to move it up to the right just a little bit. You'll notice down below there's a shadows and highlight section and this is showing me the histogram and also protect shadows and highlights. So I can move the protect shadows to the right and this will reveal some of the detail. Protect highlights will help reveal some of the information that might be in some of the highlighted areas. And I can also close this section by clicking on the text or the triangle that's pointing off to the right. Now over here on the left hand side under views we've got a single image view. I'll click on split preview and what this will do is this will draw a red line right down the center of my screen. On the left is before and on the right is after. And by clicking and dragging this red line to the right that's before and to the left is after. Let's choose another filter effect. We'll scroll down to the bottom and select tonal contrast. This is a wonderful filter that brings out wonderful contrast within the different tonal ranges in your image. We're going to go ahead and move up the saturation just a bit, bring out some of the blues in the sky, some of the warmth in the sand, and I've got this at about 64. I can click on this red arrow and it will be horizontal instead of vertical, so I can click and drag this up or down. And by clicking on the arrow once more, that becomes vertical. If I choose to see this side by side, clicking on this button will reveal the before on the left and on the right is after with the filter effect being applied. Moving to the right, I've got a select tool which allows me to select control points and also some other sections here. As we hover over these different buttons, it gives you a tooltip and a shortcut command on your keyboard. So Z is a keyboard shortcut that I can use if I choose not to select the button on the top of the screen. Or if I want to use the pan tool or the hand tool, I can click on that one as well. Now this one becomes into effect if I zoom in. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in by clicking anywhere on the screen. It'll zoom in that area that I selected clicking on the hand tool or the pan tool, clicking and dragging it will move it on the screen. Notice on the lower right hand side this becomes a navigator. This is a quick and easy way to move around on your screen to reveal before and after, left and right, by clicking and dragging this red section and it's showing you the area that's being revealed. Let's go ahead and go back to our single image view and I'm going to zoom back out. An easy way to do that is to click on the select tool and double click. The button over to the far right 
reveals the background color, so I can switch it out from a dark gray. Clicking on it once more is a medium gray or light gray, so we can toggle between those different variations of grays. On the top right hand corner we can scroll through the different types of filter effects and you can go up and down and move throughout the different 52 filters. Let's go back to our tonal contrast for a moment. And let's take a look at control points. Control points are in each of these different filter effects. And what you can do is you can either add or remove the filter effect from your image. So let's suppose we want to go ahead and remove this particular filter effect from the sky. I'll click on the minus control point, place the control point on the sky, and you'll notice that there are two sliders. One is the area of influence, so as I click and drag this out, it removes it from more of my image, or I can move it back in to remove less. This is the opacity slider. Right now there is no filter effect being added to this image, but if I click and drag this off to the right, more of that effect will be added to up to 100%. And I can move it in between if I so desire. Notice also on the lower right hand corner this becomes a loop tool. As I move my cursor around on the screen, I'll go ahead and click on this lock position. If I move this around on the screen, the loop reveals where my cursor is. Now if I want that to stay in place, I can click on this little push pin and place it where I want it to stay in one position. So I'll go ahead and click it right there and as I move my cursor around on the screen the loop tool stays put and that's at 100% left is before and on the right is after. Now if this is a look that I want to save for maybe another image that I want to bring in later on I can save it in the quick save slots and by clicking on any of the available slots here I can go ahead and click on set, give it a name and we're going to go ahead and call this tonal contrast 2 and press OK. Now this third default quick save slot well, underneath here, underneath default tonal contrast high, there's number 3, that's the tonal contrast 2 that's what I selected. So the next time I bring in an image I can go ahead and just click on tonal contrast 2 and it'll be applied to that image. We can press OK or cancel for this particular effect and over on the left hand side we do have a settings dialog box that comes up on the screen so if you choose to you can choose the different methods of being able to see the default zoom the default preview mode default appearance as well as after clicking OK if you want to save your current layer or make it a multiple layer there's also filter list that you can change so the tabs on the left hand side if you want to change portrait maybe to wedding we can choose that as well. So we'll go ahead and click OK here and notice that wedding has been replaced on this tab. Clicking on the help will bring up some helpful information about ColorFX Pro 3.0 as well as information on the interface, the different filter lists and category tabs, control points, and some workflow suggestions. And that is a quick overview of ColorFX Pro 3.0 and the interface window.